Hit it. Oh. Uh, Recording. Recording. <laughs> oh, I like the look. It's recording. Fast. It's just like. <laughs> it's like the lower the. Just so it's not. I'm talking trash behind your back. Welcome to the Grappling With Podcast. Someone sent Dr. Chris Hardy and William Walker will take a deep dive into topics covering wellness and prevention, performance, recovery, and injury management. Our mission is to provide the latest science-based <laughs> information to, to help you get the most out of your grappling journey, both on and off the mats, and help you overcome any challenges you may be grappling with. Dr. Hardy is a licensed physician and BJJ <laughs> practitioner, totally but the contents of the podcast are meant for educational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please seek out personalized care from your own medical provider <laughs> prior to implementing any medical treatment or intervention. Bill is a licensed buffoon. He says things that are a little squirrely. Do not hold these things against his gym mates, his family, Chris Hardy, Harry Hardy, or anybody at his gym. Thank you. Yes. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Or whenever it is. Good evening. Good night. Yeah, exactly. So... We have a couple topics in here, some questions, mm-hmm. some talk about informational uh, stuff about BCAAs, supplements. What else? And the um, the BJJ Stars. BJJ Stars. Kind of talk about a little bit about that. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Before we do, though, um, just kind of a little cultural history here. I think it's going to be interesting. Cultural appropriation. <laughs> in the military and probably some other fields, especially the divers, where, um, kind of where I came from in the military, we had this phrase called Blue Falcon. Mm. You ever heard of it? No. Those of you out there, I want I want you guys to, A, you know, give me your input on how that's phrased. You've used it before in the past, if you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you can look up military uses of the word Blue Falcon. So if there's any other sailors out there that <laughs> use Blue Falcon. Sailors are some, usually, I think, uh, I think uh, the Marines use it a lot, too. Mm. So... Um, so anyway, let's go through a hypothetical here in relation to that term. Okay. So let's say that there is a black belt. Okay. And this, mm. this black belt has come up from white belt all the way through the ranks to black belt. Did so fairly quickly. And, you know, at the same academy. So you would expand. I, and let's just say hypothetically, just fictional character Mm -hmm. this person also may teach as well okay okay and so Mm -hmm. interesting the academy let's just say hypothetically that same academy that this given this person so much uh has recently had a big renovations take place Mm -hmm. right yeah (laughs) and um maybe a couple months ago there was a lot of construction a big work party and hypothetically, this person would come in at like, mm-hmm. I don't know, five or six hours after the work started. Usually when there's donuts available at the time where everyone else is like, oh my God, or tacos or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, okay, you know, maybe they had something going on. And then, you know, hypothetically later on when mats were being put in, and a lot of really heavy labor scraping of the residue of the glue mm. where, you know, several other older people were there helping out. Like how old? Like pretty Very old, yeah. like over yeah. 40 and in, in, in higher. Way higher. Way higher, exactly. You know, and then hypothetically, the same black belt then would come in again at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, donuts there again, and you would think, oh, maybe they had something to do. It turns out in both cases they were dropping in at another gym. Mm. While we were laboring, they were off training. So my point is that hypothetical situation, mm. those of you out there that know what a blue falcon is, would that apply to this individual? Could you call him a blue falcon? Hmm. And it's just a question for everyone. I don't know how to comment on that. No, you don't have I don't to. don't know what a blue falcon is. Why well, not? And that's okay. So if we can get our uh, collective, um, you know, from the, from the interwebs, yeah. um, kind of give your, just on that hypoth- purely hypothetical fictional situation. Can I add context to your shitty story? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's my fictional story. <laughs> How can you add context to a, a something that is a hypothetical? What if okay. <laughs> your Blue Falcon person 
was. we haven't decided if they are if that is appropriate yet. Sure, but just assuming that they are in fact worthy of the title of a blue falcon. Okay, was creating a nest for their young Hispanic friend. <laughs> they were tut- tutelaging. Okay, a nest. Yeah. Okay. I'm tutelaging a nest. So there. This is a hypothetical. So let's yes. say this person. Was. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's how they were spending their time. Hmm. Was they were bringing a young, not Latinx, Latino, hmm. bringing them along, showing them the city, city of Seattle. Hmm. Well, first time on a scooter hmm. together. First time seeing a poop box. First time seeing a poop box. <laughs> Someone that took Literally. a dump in a box on the mm. sidewalk. <laughs> so this hypothetical person is expanding the horizons of yes, you know, of the Hispanic community in, in a jujitsu context. Uh, in other words, you're this is a, another jujitsu practitioner that you're more of these experiences are not jujitsu related, like the poop in the box. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's more of a seattle san francisco kind of deal sure so let's so you're saying that this complete mm. act of kindness ca- patronage kindness yeah your altruism just in patriotism. general did would out patriotism? yeah would <laughs> would outweigh did you burp i did would out <laughs> in my nostrils it's a good one yeah it's a good one it's uh, is it's, that hot dogs no it's a ch- it's uh it's, it's uh i can taste it peanut Thai Thai chicken. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> anyway, damn it. <laughs> my my train of thought here. You it's know how in that my is esophagus. Right. Uh, now. I bet it is. It's a rough one, dude. I'm smelling it too. Okay. So, so you're saying this this act of altruism and just generosity should outweigh should be taken in context. This person, when we're ascribing, are they a blue falcon or not? Yes. Even though that this one instance, this is the second time. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because you don't know what I was doing the other time. I, I didn't. Well, it's not personalized. I'm not this. saying it was me. I was just saying this is a hypothetical. What happens when all those old people uh-huh. that we were talking about, mm-hmm. that were there bright and early, mm-hmm. about three o'clock. <laughs> uh, yep. This is the, we all have grandparents. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. We all have grandparents. Right. And we all know. The grandparents got to take a nap because mm. they're old. Or get the early bird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're thinking about dinner. At 4.30. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if they didn't have dinner past 4.30, mm-hmm. they might not eat. You got to be in bed by 6. I get it. Right. What happens when they just trickle out and they use their little walker with the tennis balls on the bottom mm-hmm. to get out of that place? And then they go home and they just ditch mm. their beloved mm. sensei. But you know who was there to get tagged in? Potentially a blue falcon. Hmm. Yeah, I would have to see the actual work that actually said blue falcon may have actually. Most likely done. blue falcon just held a bag <laughs> for sensei. Here we go. Held his bag. Okay. For sensei. Well, we're going to put it out to a vote. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Number one. Did the blue falcon eat donuts and that's why they were not hungry for dinner last night? <laughs> Now you're in big trouble, dude. I don't see that on the horizon. <laughs> I don't believe so. Okay. Um, number two, can I guess what a blue falcon does? Yeah, I'm sure you can look it up, too, on Google and say military usage of the word blue falcon. Matter of fact... I, I could. Okay, it, there's a to. whole creed, actually, that I made previous blue falcons Great recite dance. when i was in the military i know this is starting off people are like what the hell we're yeah. talking about no, this is very important this podcast because sucks. you know because you may, may very well have blue falcons in your mist at your academy oh, okay but is it this is information I'm, I'm gonna, is a blue falcon like i'm assuming it's an actual bird is it no okay well i was just assuming it was like but it just happens to have the the, uh, the name b after. and f and so instead of saying the actual Sometimes the very offensive words we say blue falcon because <clears throat> it stands for something else that was called B and F. Does that have to do with butt? No. Oh. So anyway, no, we're going to let that simmer, okay. I think. Okay. We'll do a, so we'll anyway. do a poll. 
So you may, this is, a, <clears throat> this is actually, this whole hypothetical is a public surface announcement. Oh, <laughs> look at you. So if you have per, perhaps blue falcons in your mist, you'll be on the lookout for mm. them in your academy. Okay. Okay. Anyway. I'm sure everyone's very appreciative of that. And that everyone's I'm, also probably very worried why, why you don't have your life alert on <laughs> around your neck. Or why the old dude's going off on a story. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So shifting gears. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Let's kick it off with a little bit of supplement and stuff. Okay. So we have an episode where we talked about the top three pre-workouts. Uh, I think they, it was kind of specific for mm -hmm. grappling a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about creatine, beta alanine, and then... Um, Baking soda? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Bicarbonate. Uh, yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, those typically don't have all that niacin in them. They'll give you the, the tingles and mm -hmm. make you feel crazy. Mm -hmm. um, good, cheap options that you can use true recently it's been brought to my attention and i guess you've seen this is bcaas mm -hmm. which means branch chain amino acids okay those are in the news uh or in the workout community at least mm -hmm. and there's memes about it mm -hmm. um i'm just gonna read the the question that yeah. actually came in okay and we can talk about it so uh, the question is what are bcas for are they legit i've seen people advertising them in youtube videos and also have seen memes recently making fun of influencers fitness influencers for still trying to sell bcaas in 2023 if they do work who should be taking them that is a very succinct set of questions yeah. and i like it yeah i think he's <clears throat> armenian Okay. Yeah. That figures. Exactly. Yeah, I like it. Right to the point. Yeah. So, branched chain amino acids. So, first of all, just really quick, let's back up. Proteins in general are just chains of amino acids. Proteins differ in their structure and function depending on the sequence and composition of individual amino acids of the 20 so called that we people, there's more people say, oh, there's more than 20. The main ones we're talking about for nutrition. Okay. Okay. Now, of those amino acids, there are some that are called essential amino acids. You probably heard of that. Olivia, I think you were asking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Essential amino acids are things that we can't make ourselves to. We have to get them in our diet. Okay. Okay. They're required. Same like essential fatty acids. Some fats that we can manufacture from other things. Same with certain amino acids things we can we can actually manufacture some essential ones we cannot branch chain amino acids have to do with what's called the r group of an amino acid so an amino acid has a very standardized structure the thing that makes individual ones different is the tail mm. a chemical tail called an r group and that tail is a chain of different other atoms carbons, nitrogens, whatever, that is in a certain configuration and length and composition that changes its behavior when you link them together. Like some, it will make some curl certain ways. It will make some res go and hide from water. Other ones will be more attracted to water. Thus, it changes the configuration of the protein. Okay. okay. So this is our group. Branch chain just describes the ones that have this R group that has a branch. It looks like a, a like a branching structure, and there are a couple of those. The most um, common one we talk about is leucine. Yeah. You want me to just keep rolling on this, Bill? Yeah, keep going. Okay. So, this is so entertaining that Bill just was like, dude, I gotta <laughs> freaking get out. And I had a little camera issue. You're like, dude, I gotta leave. I can't handle it. <laughs> So I'm just giving some background so or people like understand. No, I'm like bor <laughs> like Borophil, bro. <laughs> so you no, know, it's important people understand that way they're not getting you know duped and or yeah. they know what they're doing. They know yeah. what they're getting. The branching is just there's certain R groups or tails of certain amino acids that have a branch structure to them. That's all that means. Okay, and they've been shown over. Um, in research to kind of stimulate the anabolic 
process through this thing called mTOR, mechanistic, mechanistic target of rapamycin. It's a thing that kind of drives the anabolic response, okay. a switch. Okay, <clears throat> We've talked about it before. Yeah. Of those branched chain amino acids, leucine seems to be the one that really hits it the hardest. So the question is, if you are getting a good bioavailable protein source, mm. for instance, let's say, um, you know, grass-fed meat, certainly wild game, mm-hmm. right? Um, in general, and I'm not talking necessarily um, more animal proteins. Quality cheese? Yeah, lesser it doesn't have as much protein per mm-hmm. per calorie, but you have to eat a lot. You would have to eat a lot, right? But yeah, sure, whey protein, mm-hmm. something like that. You'll ha- you should have enough of these amino acids will be in there. Okay, okay, is my point. So, if that's the case, you know, people I've seen supplements saying, "Oh, well, you can get all your protein needs without the cal the caloric value of the protein." Right, it's like you have your cake and eat it too. I've seen one recently. I forgot the brand, but some, of course, <clears throat> some doctor came up with it. Of course, right, mm-hmm. and trying to market it like this is the next best thing for your health. Um, now, for most people that are young, relatively young, athletic, um, use trying to use this as a performance or an anabolic enhancer. I, I don't know that it's ev- any better than just getting an adequate amount of protein. Yeah. Okay. If you're trying to hit that anabolic switch a little harder, and I'd have to go back and through, look at the literature on this, like if you're a bodybuilder, <clears throat> right? Mm-hmm. And you're trying to produce muscle growth, you're trying to maximize these little, you know, decimal percentage points, right? Of trying to optimize things. Perhaps getting a supplementing with some extra branch chain amino acids to hit the anabolic switch a little harder, theoretically. Yeah. That's what they would use it for. Or <clears throat> as you age, it's very it's you need more and more protein and stimulus to hit that anabolic switch. And it's very important for older people to maintain muscle mass and it's increasingly hard to do so. Mm. So this would be a good I would say branched chain amino acids could be a good supplement for an older person that is lifting and trying to maintain their muscle mass, right, and getting an adequate protein. But as far as, you know, them saying, you know, d- does your average uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner mm-hmm. need branched-chain amino acids? My personal opinion is no. Especially if they are, they have a, a f- protein-filled diet. Well. Quality protein. Qual- you now, complete protein diet. You know, okay. Then we get in this whole... Uh, very touchy subject about the plant-based proteins versus okay. animal-based proteins. The bottom line is, in general, that animal-based proteins are far more bio- bioavailable and just a more... Complete. Someone that is down that road of, a let's say, a vegetarian sure. or vegan or something like that, which is whatever, Yeah. If it are, would you recommend be, they take BCAs then? If Not necessarily. Okay. Um, it depends on what they're trying to do, right? Okay. Their goals. I mean, they... As, as far as you got to know why you're using something. If you're trying to hit the anabolic response mm-hmm. harder um, and you feel like you're, because plant proteins you typically per calorie have to eat, first of all, a lot more per calorie to get the same amount of bioavailable yeah. protein. And some of the plant protein sources aren't as complete as far as their amino acid profile. I think, you know, there's some good, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hemp and um, like pea protein. Okay. They're decent. Um, but, Sure, you could, if you feel like you need to, you know, shore up your bases a little bit, especially if you're a high-level competitive athlete, you yeah, can give we, it a shot. If we take out, like, let's say a strength athlete uh-huh. or uh, a bodybuilder, sure. so that leaves us with maybe cardio-intense wor- athletes mm-hmm. or, or people that do that in recreation, like long-distance running, triathlon, swimming, something like that, and then you have grapplers. Um, I know two different things, Big but time. could it'd be beneficial and let's it's kind of a blanket term if you mm. are older it's probably going to be better it, or it's mm. probably a good thing to take it okay if you're going to yeah yeah but let's say the mid 20s to mid 30s so with i know that's a big range no so. you're asking it's a great question but that like a long distance runner endurance athlete <clears throat> in general gets into a catabolic state 
pretty often. Yeah. Um, and it's hard for them. You look at a runner's build. It's mm-hmm. very hard for them to maintain muscle mass. Yeah. As far as compared to, I don't know, a grappler. Mm-hmm. Okay. That doesn't do that. So, you know, you could make an argument. It might, it may be helpful. I would have to go back and theoretically yeah. for them to maybe supplement some. For a grappler that's getting a good amount of bioavailable protein, probably mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this is predicated on uh, the, those people are actually eating pretty well and stuff like that. Of course. You know? <laughs> of course. We're food not, quality, right? Yeah. yeah. If, if, if you're one of these people and you haven't even gotten the nutritional piece in check. Right. It's like building your You're building your, away money yeah, on building your sunroom in a house that's on a shitty foundation. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. No supplements gonna yeah cure a lot of these things or, or fix a lot of these. No, things. and and it's not in place of a a really good high quality bioavailable protein source, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I know they're because the, they're, they're advertising it like you can. Yeah. You know, you can get all your protein intake from taking like some mm-hmm. of these amino uh, supplements and you're missing. It's so reductionist. It pisses me off yeah. a little bit because what else comes with that protein? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What else you're getting, let's say in a, in a steak or something like that from a, or a, an elk steak or yeah. something like that. Right. What are you getting from there besides the protein? A lot. Yeah. So and that's where the memes come from. Probably is probably it is. It's not because when supplements, a new one comes out or whatever, uh, they just name it something a little different where it's got a celebrity or a doctor behind it. Yep. Then it catches steam. And then you have the memes come of making fun of those people because the information's also been around, been out that <clears throat> this isn't going to fix you. Exactly. Making BCAs is not going to just cure and give no. you all the protein you need. And no. you're now a performance athlete. No. You know, that. That's so far down the line, which I think we've mentioned many times. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's kind of my take on that. Hey, Chris, Uh, I had a question. Yeah. So leucine is the one that you said mainly uh, activates mTOR? It seems to be the the biggest stimulation for the the mTOR switch. And I don't know why, but I thought I read somewhere that it was like around, was it 3,000 milligrams? That might be what you need. So, yeah, three grams. Or three grams. The okay. same thing. Same so, thing. So, um, does that mean that if you supplemented with just leucine and took in three grams, it could help activate that pathway? But, see, the problem is, it. that's a great question, but that's what we're getting at, this reductionist type stuff. Activating that pathway, but what do you have to support that anabolic pathway? Just because you're hitting an anabolic pathway, if you just supplemented leucine, you're not getting all those other essential amino acids required for muscle building, right? Mm. So you can hit a switch. That's fine, but if you got no nothing to turn on, yeah, well, you know let, what I mean. Let's say, <clears throat> let's say you had like an inferior protein source or not enough. Let's say you ate three eggs and now you have fifteen to eighteen grams of protein, and then you supplemented with some leucine. Sure. Would that be helpful? Sure. But even though you're not getting like a more robust, but why aren't you or bolus of protein? I mean, why aren't you getting just enough not protein? Hungry. Yeah, or or let's just say, you know, you you're just making a quick breakfast. You don't have to defrost time to defrost a steak. Yeah, sure. I don't think it's gonna hurt. I don't. I would have to really look de- and see if there's anything actually been studied on that. If it's actually how much more beneficial is it? Mm. Mm-hmm. It's not going to hurt anything, but again, it may not may not actually help. I mean, you'd have it might to not kind be of as beneficial as, as you th- as, as you think thinks. it might be. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times we look at something. The whole problem with reductionist science is they take one thing, have identified a mechanism, then let's just hit, just isolate that. And we've talked about this mm-hmm. ad nauseum before, where there it's there's such a complex system, and you're trying to outsmart. Mm. a biological system Mm -hmm. and it usually doesn't work silver bullets yeah it usually doesn't work okay okay um we had a jiu-jitsu question okay come in and i'm just gonna read read it and what they're wondering is that they don't want to rely on strength question is do you have any suggestions on transitioning from relying on strength primarily to relying on fundamental jiu-jitsu 
Or is that something that comes with time? Because I got to tell you, as an old guy, I, uh, I have to choose reliance on strength or being trapped under a crazy fat guy or rabid white belt. So this is a perfect question for it's you. A, yeah, it is a very good question. In that scenario, let's say you're an older person too, yeah. and you're trying to rely on strength to escape those positions, yeah. you're going to basically inviting injury. Mm. Okay, because you're already at a compromised position, and you're going to try to muscle out of it. Yeah, especially at a larger. I'm assuming by the question, you know, a larger or very strong athletic person. Yeah, if they just have someone bigger than them, or you're gonna, <clears throat> you're asking for injury. Mm. I would spend, and I don't know what level this person. They're a blue belt. Okay. Yeah. This is a perfect time to, and it's going to be super tedious and not fun at all, is to really start to work these type of escapes. And if you really want to, I'm going to advertise this again because I think it's a phenomenal resource. Danaher's new Ageless Jiu-Jitsu mm. talks about this exact problem. Mm. And his first, the first uh, little series of it is the bottom game, exactly okay. what we're talking about here. And emphasizing keeping yourself safe and really learning some how to, use leverage and technique to kind of not only get out of those positions, but actually turn them into more of an advantageous one for you to attack. But if you're muscling out of these things, even though that's what you think you, you that just tells you, especially at blue belt, this is what I need to work on Yeah, and find yourself a black belt or a higher belt, maybe a same age group mm -hmm. or similar Yeah, and say, can you work on, I'm getting stuck here. Yeah. Can you work on this stuff? I was just working with um, one of our um, one of our classmates the other day on getting out of the bottom of of um, half guard when okay, they're when yeah. you got your back to the floor and they're cross facing like and you're flattened out flattened out with yeah. a cross face and underhook yeah kind of the worst possible position for yeah. for half guard yeah and so we were just going through how to some some ideas on how to kind of mitigate that. Um, and that is going to help so much because then you're not worried about how to, you know, you're confident in your ability to get out. And it may not happen right away, mm -hmm. you know, especially if someone's larger. You, there, you'll have to do some some work and and really start figuring it out. But that's where you need to spend your time on the mats right now. If that's if you're if you feel like you're having to use strength as a blue belt to get out of situations, yeah. You're asking for just repeated injury, especially with the age piece in there. Especially with the age piece yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. What it, do you What do you think? I mean, I'm talking as an older. Yeah, dude, yeah. It, and I would say, whether older or not, use this time to put yourself like invite those positions, mm -hmm. uh, invite getting flattened out and starting to work from there with using intentionally. Like, have the fat guy smush you. Yep. It, you don't think about what they're thinking of. Like, man, I smushed that blue belt today. Yeah. He couldn't get out. Yeah. Or I passed, and then I got his back. Or right? whatever it is, right? You're going to lose, especially in the beginning. You're going to lose, especially if you are inviting the positions, and you're I'm not saying start inside control. Put up very little fight to them passing, and then, boom, now they're inside control. Now you got work to do. You're starting from such a deficit, and you're going to lose. And <clears throat> I'll say this. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to real world your, you know, right now, you can find, like, a upper belt that can give you lots of pressure and mm -hmm. knows what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And can give you feedback as well. And yeah. then kind of go out into the wild a little bit. Get a little bit. Okay, I want you to try this. Go out to like you suggest, and go mm -hmm. out. Then go out into the wild and let that kind of happen and work on. Yeah, it. yeah. <clears throat> Especially if you pick the, those upper belts that they're going to apply some pinning pressure and stuff like that, and they know when to they they should know when you're doing the correct response, mm -hmm. and they will loosen up some pressure in for your response to be successful. That's right. Instead of like, let's say it's a brown belt they're not gonna just apply brown belt pinning pressure throughout that whole um mm -mm. practice moment that right. is essentially a situational uh <clears throat> sparring they're 
going to do it until you apply the correct grip or the correct post or the correct shrimping. Then they're going to release a little bit of pressure because your shrimping is probably not brown belt level. But you're giving positive feedback. Exactly. Yeah. And then, they, yeah, they can even verbally do it. That's it. That's the grip you need, right? Yeah. Get your elbows in. Now you have space in between. Mm-hmm. Now they're not chest to chest. You got frames in. Mm-hmm. Now you can start to get to your side. That's right? right. And then just for that example. Um, so putting yourself in those spots, mm-hmm. whether it be situational with an upper mm-hmm. belt, whether it's uh, s- starting to uh, do that in the sparring rounds, um, live there and be disciplined to not use your effort and lose a lot. You're going to, in situationals, you're going to get mowed through. You are, and it's worth it though, because yes. at the end of six months of doing that, yeah, you're going to be so much better, and then you're not going to be like, like you can build a game around mm-hmm. how your escapes. Even there are yes. people who have done that. Yeah, there are Very people trappy people that will bait people into certain positions because yeah. they know they have not only have good escape, but then they can go right into a, a submission type of yeah, and um, and you're going to also get to the <clears> point where you you're comfortable with not being tense in those moments. So one, your cardio is going to get instantly better yep. because your economy of your breath and uh, exertion is going to be there. Exactly. And that's one of the things that happens when you get upper belts, when they go with the lower belts and whether they weren't, they were, maybe they were implementing this and now they have a blue belt in their side control and why we can be calmer. Because we've been there so much, and now there's a lesser skilled person. It's, it's, it's one of these things where it's like, okay, there's a couple things I know now that are intuitive because we've been there so much, or that we're consciously thinking about of like, he's not getting this elbow away from my ribs. Not a, that's that's now my constitution, right? <laughs> I ain't breaking it, and it becomes something where I'm not actively just yeah holding you know it's like hard as i can it's just nope there's just a chicken wing down and there's some intention with it but i don't even have to hold it there all the time it's when he starts to try to address it Zoop. yep and then Pull okay there's a little tension now and then you can release so mm-hmm. now this like tension throughout my body is now gone mm-hmm. right and i'm, I'm kind of one of those trappy people right where mm-hmm. i can then off of a fundamentally disciplined position on bottom defensively i can then start working and feeling like you do little bumps and stuff like that to keep them off balance so they can't settle in and and start developing leverage points that make it so even if you do chicken wing down they're still going to be able to lift it because you just allowed them to get so deep on a grip or something so you start to develop basically what you were saying this feel for the bad positions Mm -hmm. to where okay I'm, i'm actually cool hanging out i would say we have a brown belt named jason which has become quite good at this he's lived in a lot of bad positions and and that's he he enjoys that style of being very hard to submit yeah for sure um and that's that that's something that's taken a long time um but it you don't have to get to that level you this guy especially or people that are dealing with this you just have to put some intention in those movements and you'll be shocked in eight classes yeah eight sessions of putting intentional work in how much better you are in there and then potentially that mentality can trickle down to when you're on top it will yeah it will trickle down because you know what the right things to do and you Mm -hmm. know how to kind of shut some of those down a little bit if you know you become intelligent on the top people with, with the too. best pressure on top feel like a sandbag that's right they they don't feel like a like a ram coming through your oh. body or through like your hips or your knees or like someone that's when they're really driving in that's not what's like hard to deal with no that's actually kind of easy to deal with because it's you can easy miss- to divert. Exactly. And I yeah. use that ana- I use that exact analogy, the sandbag analogy, when I talk about when someone lower just, belts with. Yeah. I'm like, because if someone's on, let's say I'm in a bad position on the bottom and they're very tense and mm-hmm. they're really trying to, you know, uh, their whole body's rigid. Yeah. It's so much easier to flip them off of me. Yeah. And as opposed to someone who's just laying in and kind of mm-hmm. 
doing the sandbag thing. Totally. And, and yeah. for people at our gym that, that listen, um, recently we've been doing a lot of knee slice stuff. Um, and where we pause, once our shin, our knee comes over the hip and our shin is on the inside of the thigh, and then we have this almost resting position mm-hmm. where we're, we're cooking them. We're testing their flexibility a little bit. Our mm-hmm. hip is kind of leaned into their kind of mm-hmm. hip groin area. Um, and we're getting ready to finish that knee cut. Well, what happens is a lot of time newer people, they're a little ball. And they're just a little ball that's sitting right on top of the inside, what was that, the, the thigh? The adductor. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and there's such a small ball that all it takes is just a small little shovel of the hips. A little hip shovel in there, they go over. And they go over. Now your hips, the bottom person's hips are on above theirs, I, and it, it's a done deal. I think I worked an entire game at Purple Belt of just doing that yeah. from the bottom of knee slide. Just a little knockover things. Yeah, just shoveling. Yeah. So to a uh, apply that technique appropriately mm. we actually are widening our weight distribution so instead of being a little mm. ball which it looks like if you want if you're looking it looks like well he just sees a little tiny ball that's sitting there with his elbow tight and then his, his legs are tight. getting ready to pass right right but it's not yeah there's a leaning into the knee shield that hasn't come in front yet there's a settling to yes a, a kind of a drooping into mm-hmm. a sagging mm-hmm. and and then an elbow that starts peeling dragging over the hip and down the rib or up the ribs and then there's a left post if i'm passing to my left then there's a left leg that's not really close yep our knees are not like this they're not together it's out it's a balance yep. beam and yep. also it's creating weight that's way at the end of the mm-hmm. lever and that, that word sagging, that's in wrestling that's mm-hmm. used, in kickboxing, and MMA, mm-hmm. like sagging on someone is how you really cook someone and develop like a really good pressure game. It's yeah. not dynamic. No. You know, it's... And you're not using <laughs> much energy at all. Yeah. Marilla Santana, mm-hmm. you know, some of the best uh, mm. uh, top pressure passing in the game. Obviously, uh, JT Torres is another one if people are interested in that sort of stuff. And you'll you'll see like Marillo, he he does a certain style mm-hmm. of uh, pressure mm-hmm. passing, and that's his hips are very high in the air, his his head is very low, it's it's almost like a tripod, if you yeah. will. Um, but he, you, you see, he's just it's almost like a he's pulling them as he's sagging into them. That's right. So there's like a two part piece there. Yep. Um, and it really really helps. Uh, there, there's, but they're not tense. That's also. the thing. Yeah. Well, they're not tense because they've they've also developed these techniques on the like we were talking how mm-hmm. we started talking about these techniques on the bottom. Yeah. Um. Learning, I think, getting out of the bottom of bad <coughs> positions is the best way to learn energy conservation mm. as well too. Mm. <clears throat> because, and to your other point, I think those that translates really well to your top game as far as and you're like, oh, okay, I know exactly how. You know the sagging. Yeah, when to make a change? When to just sit there and cook with your own body weight and using gravity? But that's all learned from escaping these type yeah. of positions too. It really is, uh, and it doesn't. It seems counterintuitive, but it's amazing how it translates. So your advice seems very similar to mine mm-hmm. with him. Yeah. It's like because all you're going to do is invite injury. Yes, I can tell you right now. I don't care. It's a black belt with the same situation. I am not muscling anyone. Yeah. yeah. At all. Not that I could, but I'm just saying. That I, yeah. When I roll here, you kind of muscle. Well, I just want to put a little stink on it. You just look there. at my guns? Uh, no, it's just, 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 I, I just eyeball and saying, yeah, I kind of, okay. <laughs> how are you, how are we the same weight? Because you are way thicker. You're like a thicky. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Where? Are you guys the same height? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I have like a half inch on them. Maybe. maybe. I think we're close enough to where maybe some short guys would argue, but a tall dude's <laughs> going to be like, you guys are the same height. Yeah, like <laughs> little guys. But you I got- think you carry more of your um, muscle in your thighs, Bill. I th- you have pretty good sized legs, don't you? Or gluteal. Oh, <clears> my legs aren't the, my legs aren't as big as yours. Though. Caboose. Yeah. I have a lot more gluteal weight, probably. <laughs> mm. But 
upper body wise, you look much thicker than me. I don't know about that. Doesn't he? In the upper body, doesn't he look quite a bit he, who beefier? Knows, man. It's hard to say. I mean, you got a set of cha chas on you. Well, you know, I mean, I got, you know, I got a little bird oh. chest. So you just bounce. Yeah, of yeah. course, I can do it on, on command. Let me see it again. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it again. Come on. <laughs> you got to be quick and catch it. It's like an Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Uh, um, yeah, I was th- I was thinking about that in the shower. Well, we are, as, it's funny you brought That's the, weird, Bill. I mean, it's very <laughs> weird, actually. It's funny. This is even weirder. <laughs> it's funny you brought that up. Because I was telling Carrie, I'm like, I actually want to lean lean out to about 178. And I'm hovering around. Like a walk around 178? Yeah, I'm, I'm hovering around 184 right now. So is I, that I was, just I, for feel? Yeah. Like, just you feel like... I feel better. I feel more... I feel faster. Mm-hmm. I've, um, I'm not carrying around as but you'd much. you'd still do middleweight, 181. And for sure. Yeah. I'm just saying right now, um, I don't... Um, I would like to... That six pounds makes a big difference in how I move. Yeah, that's that's what I am typically around that 78 is... See, is I'm heavier than you are right now. 84 or something? Yeah, I'm, eight, I'm about 184 this morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that, that's, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting thing. Cause I, I find, I, I thought as I would get into the seventies, I would maybe find more injuries because I was thinking like less protection, like, mm. but it, it hadn't happened. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've heard that if you have less, uh, fat or, uh, meat on you, like you, if you get too lean, you can, well, it depends on what your body frame is. Mm. for your body frame yeah okay. of course it's all relative um yeah i think i mean there's so many differences in morphology i mean i have tyrannosaur arms my arms are super short and that could be where i'm why they visually look like yeah like much thicker totally or something yeah mm-hmm. where i don't have that long you know lean, those lean long mm-hmm. are you, know. you do you have longer legs no oh, okay i'm a torso with a bunch of i look like a mr potato head yeah you so do. i have a long torso i have short legs and short arms I always, I, I, you know, I, I never put those together, but I definitely see that, especially in your face. <laughs> yes, for sure. The Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. It's why I like half guard so much. If you think about that. Uh, <clears throat> morphology gosh. wise. Yeah. Long morphology. torso, short legs. Yeah. Short, yeah. Hmm. Okay. See? That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it kind of answers my question a little bit. <laughs> from, from the shower. From the shower? Yeah. Um, we had another. I do, by the way. Thank you for thinking of me. About oh yeah, <laughs> every, even though it's yeah. kind of weird, but every I mean, shower, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we had a comment. I can't say this word. I'm gonna try. All right, um, then you can correct me. It's phosphatidylserine. Fo- yeah, phosphatidylserine. Well, yeah, pretty close. Pretty good. I did have a practice before. That's pretty good actually. Um, so that this person is saying that is. Insane for stress management yep. and sleep quality. I was using it heavily when my youngest was waking up at night, uh, waking up at night a lot, and I was getting woken up. Combined with CBD and a good dose of magnesium glycinate, you get awesome sleep. That's what their experience. Yeah. yeah what a- is this stuff? So phosphatidylserine is one of, um, there's a bunch of these things called adaptogens. And adaptogens as a as compounds, there's many different ones. Ashwagandha, mm. phosphatidylserine, they have different mechanisms. But the general idea is, especially if you you know, remember how we talked about how cortisol typically has like that. Um, Gosh, sorry, I burped, burped it. I did, dude. I blew it Dragon right. Dragon breath. Sorry, it's rough, dude. It's trying to kill you. It literally tastes like brats in my mouth. It's not brats. So it's very interesting how I turn that into. Yeah, that. it's weird what your butthole does. No, no. If you now, if you hang around for like three more hours, we might, you know, you might get a brat. sample that sample a brat out your butt. Yeah, but we're not going to do that okay. right now. I'm sorry about that. I'm drinking this, and it's just fairly gnarly. My I'm, friend. I'm killing you. <laughs> I just recognize it because I smelled it myself. I'm, I'm at like, the point uh, where I'm kind of liking it. <laughs> See, I know when your eyes start watering. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sorry, dude. It's, it's like okay. a, it's such an old dude thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean you got a loose bee burping at you. Too, <laughs> so um yeah, these adaptogens in general, you know, we talked about cortisol and it has a uh, a diurnal variation where typically you'll have your highest cortisol peaks in the morning. Mm. It's the thing that starts to help, you know, wake you up. Okay. Basically. Yeah. And then 
during night especially, that's where you should have your peak of your, you should have your lowest cortisol readings at night. So it's this curve throughout the day. Mm. A lot of people with chronic stress from, you know, the whole stress cup thing, allostatic load, well, they'll develop an, an adapt uh, adaptation that isn't so good for the health where they'll start having, you know, higher cortisol levels at night. Mm. And um, those of you that are listening that have ever taken like prednisone or any of these other medications that are basically mimic cortisol, they're, they're corticosteroids like cortisol is. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest side effects of prednisone is insomnia. Mm. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, you would never take those medications, certainly near bedtime. But if you're, if you're in a stress situation, your body's um, producing cortisol at times, higher levels than it should, especially at night, you have a really hard time of going to sleep and staying asleep. And these things like ashwagandha, especially phosphatidylserine, which I've used before, um, it really helps blunt that response a bit. If, if someone, I, <clears throat> Liv, don't we know someone that gets headaches from ashwagandha? Oh, it's uh, possible, sure. I don't know. I thought I thought we did. It is, is this a, if ashwagandha, for whatever reason, they have some sort of yeah. side effect like that, this would be another For sure, okay. absolutely, because... People have, you know, things can affect different people differently, of course. Yeah. And if that's bothering you, certainly, phosphatidylserine is excellent. I okay. use it for quite a while. And um, the magnesium chelates, like glycinate, are mm-hmm. very helpful for sleep. You can even get really geeked out and do the magnesium 3 and 8, mm-hmm. which actually passes the blood-brain barrier better than yeah. the other magnesiums um, as far as getting into the magnesium in the brain. Um, and what else were they doing? Uh, some CBD. Yeah. Um, Pro CBD. I, a lot of people is, love that too, to, to the cannabinoids, to, uh, especially CBD, which is, as people know, is the non THC cannabidiol is what CBD is. It's not the um, THC, so it's mm-hmm. not psychoactive, but it is part of the cannabis plant. Um, it's very, can be very helpful. Um, is there more studies out on CBD? Yeah, yet? they're starting to, but okay. just we're still running into that same. Um, problem with cannabis derivatives and right. it's it's a there's not as much as I would like especially on sleep because I think anecdotally mm-hmm. having used it myself it seems to be helpful yeah. but again again we're talking about giving advice to people it's you know it, especially with the cannabinoids yeah. it's, it's hard to know um, something else they could consider that I think works amazingly well uh, if they want to play around with that, or if anyone else says this, we've talked about this before during the sleep, the L-theanine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that works. That's a nice little thing. The magnesium with the L-theanine works really well for sleep. Mm-hmm. But if you do if you do think you're having a higher cortisol thing, we and the way to know is, let's say at 11 p.m., you're tired, but you're wired. Mm. It's called tired, but wired, basically. Mm-hmm. You're like, I... I, my eyes are tired, I can tell, but I still feel like I'm a little, you know, like almost jittery sometimes yeah. or I can't calm down. You may very well have um, kind of a flip-flop cortisol thing. And sometimes phosphatidylserine is a really good thing to help blunt that at night. Mm. So, yeah, that's, I think that's legit, um, yeah. me personally. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting comment. It, it sounded like it worked well for them. I know yeah. uh, I take ashwagandha mm-hmm. and I double the dose on um, days I do uh, – if I either had a hard training at night or if I did a two a day uh, before bed, I'll double yeah, it up. And something to be impor- important to talk about since you're talking about ashwagandha, things like that, you should consider go, um, you know, after about 90 days, mm-hmm. consider consider kind of um, cycling off of it. Okay. Um, you could cycle off of that and then maybe try a little phosphate. Phosphatidylserine. No, just a whole nother cycle something else that okay. is a similar thing. It's kind of nice to do that. Uh, to give your body, you hit the, your body with the same thing over and over, just in general principles. Right. Um, try something, um, you know, similar, but but not this, you know, not yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I take also the CBD, CBDN. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and CBN. Yeah, yeah, another cannabinoid. Yeah, and then um, like I have my little sleep mix, which is <laughs> that that I, I make sure, and then the the magnesium stuff. It works well, don't you yeah. think? Yeah, because like we have a bunch of supplements that we end up taking, like mm. like our vitamin D and mm-hmm. our uh, vitamin C. Um, gosh, there's I don't know. It's 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 a lot. <laughs> there's there, what well, else? That's about there? it. No, I swear. Oh, quercetin. Quercetin. quercetin uh, yeah. Uh, during allergies and stuff. quercetin and nettles. Yeah, it's super <laughs> yeah, good for and, and, um, allergies. 
um, zinc, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but if it's like, don't feel like choking down 12 pills, mm-hmm. then I'm like, just give me the sleep stuff. <laughs> and, and that's what the, the basic one is, is the ashwagandha, some, the magnesium. Yeah, it's good. And CB, CBN. And it's, yeah. The, it, I, it's helped me. It's helped me a, a lot. And I typically don't sleep well. I'm, I'm a night owl kind of person. So. Right. And some people have different, we call them chronotypes mm-hmm. where, you know, some people are night owl, some people are morning people. Yeah. I seem to be neither. I don't, <laughs> which is a real problem. But you are as old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no problem though. Um, I know I've missed some questions that have come in or like I wasn't organized and like wrote them down. And I was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to ask that. And then I end up forgetting. Yeah. So if we haven't touched on something that you've either emailed or messaged or made a comment on YouTube or something like that, do it again. Just remind me. Or I'm, I'm usually the one looks at it. Chris does look at on YouTube as well. Um, uh, and so does Olivia. But if, uh, if I ever forget something or we haven't mm. touched on it, that's mm. probably why is I, I lost track uh, organization wise. No worries. Um, so BJJ stars was yesterday. Yeah. And I didn't watch it. Yep. So a little bit of spoiler alerts coming in. Um, so if you haven't watched it, yeah. turn this off, which we won't actually, I didn't watch the finals. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that'll be later today. Um, so we'll just a couple key things to check out. I absolutely recommend watching it because this is a perfect example. There's a little bit of our, there's a little bit of uh, discussion going on. No gi or gi. A lot of people say gi is boring. Uh, people more so recently have been saying no gi is boring. And I think, yeah, I think <laughs> our uh, opinion on that which we've always said is it's not about the what you're wearing it's about the competitors of course you know a little bit about the rule set can come into play yeah um but for the most part it's going to be about the competitors yeah and bjj stars it's a gi tournament they had a couple super fights in there but they pulled in all the top uh, huge names it's an absolute tournament no no weight class what is the rule set in so, general it's IBJJF uh, okay. rules, but they did shorter rounds. So instead of your normal 10-minute rounds, mm. I believe they were six. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they were either six or seven. So shorter round. Um, and then they they let the athletes know they will be very uh, quick to penalize inactivity yeah which is like a dream come true and that's why people get bored with high level gi matches yes because there's a there's that kind of gripping and stuff yeah stalemating stalemating yeah Yeah, for sure afraid to move forward well when you shorten the time you have to move Mm -hmm. you don't have four minutes to address one grip and then hopefully play the advantage game playing the advantage game exactly yeah Uh, and this is something that judo's tried to take advantage of or not take advantage of but tried to adjust and make rule changes where Mm. you can't you can't do certain grip structures in judo anymore um how you used to and they've changed it because of stalling it and because interesting there's a, a few grips you can do in judo which almost nullify uh like a, a tremendous amount of moves. So if someone gets a good like two uh, two grip combo, it, it's it makes a match extremely boring. Gotcha. It's almost like a stalemate. Like let's say a 50-50 with lapel, right? Got it. Uh, that there's nothing really beneficial about that mm-hmm. except for you're holding someone in in that mm-hmm. position. I got gotcha. you. So anyway, so they they uh, they are very quick to penalize and then the shorter rounds and then you still have your points and advantage structure. Okay. Which Ends up being pretty good. Um, and then, like I said, you get the right competitors in there. That's right. Um, and a lot of big guys, uh, Adam Morzinski, mm-hmm. uh, probably the best European in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Devontae Johnson, a uh, really good uh, American uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner that has podiumed multiple times at Worlds. And, and, and forgive of, me, was this gi or no gi? Gi. Okay. Yep. Uh, Victor Hugo, multiple oh, time yeah. world champion, for sure. Recent world champion, um, I think his name is Os- Osvaldo mm-hmm. Nat- Natali. He's about four hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he's just a giant. Uh, he's won ultra heavy m- many times. Um, Gutenberg Pereira, uh, Brazilian champion, uh, Eric Muniz, uh, world champion, uh, Pan's champion. 
uh, really good. Man, that's a card so far. Yeah, and then um, and there's even more than that that I, and I'm just not remembering. Did you say like Mik- Did you say Mika? Mika Gaval, which is like kind of the that was cool because he's a middleweight. Right, eighty pounds against these monsters. Against right? Victor Hugo's two hundred and sixty pounds, mm-hmm. the four hundred pounder we mentioned already. All these guys are heavyweight and up. <laughs> Kynan, yeah, uh, K- Kynan Duarte. Right. I mean, in my opinion, between him and uh, between him and Tynan Dalpra, mm-hmm. you have the two best gi practitioners. Well, I mean, Marigali, I guess too. It's kind of hard to say. And but they, uh, they're they're up there. Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, especially when you throw in size, because Kynan. Duarte is built like incredible, like holy smokes. You see Gordon Ryan, uh, Kynan's right there with him in physique. Right. <laughs> um, just, I think, bigger maybe. Um, so it, fantastic. And uh, so a couple of key points is first round, they give Mika, the 400-pound guy, <laughs> which is like it's almost like a circus sideshow you're like okay this is crazy um and mika beats him mika actually takes his back twice wow um, he wasn't able to finish him um but it was impressive because he ended up pulling guard and having this monster on him and uh wow he ends up taking his back off that so w- one of the reasons i point this out it's not a super action-packed match but for people that complain about people being so much bigger, you can see what Mika does against such a size disadvantage. We just had a question about that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can watch how he goes two on one with a sleeve mm. and uses his knees, bringing to his chest and just punches a, an arm across the middle yes. and then really commits to walking out the back. Yep. When you get these really big people uh, uh, that have a much much more size on you. A lot of times they're not as mobile right. as you. Um, so it, it was it was pretty interesting. 